second half next year. In any case, my time is about up, but there's a little more to come. Because I am no expert on Sir Walter Raleigh. You're probably thinking, yes, I've just heard you, obviously not. What I am an expert on is Charles Dickens. I told you you were lucky you didn't have to hear about him, but I do want to teach you one thing about Charles Dickens. You all know he wrote A Christmas Carol. You all know he invented Tiny Tim. What you don't know is that Tiny Tim was so beloved by everybody in all of Europe that a few years after A Christmas Carol came out, Charles Dickens helped found the first children's hospital in the world because of Tiny Tim. It is still in London today. It is called the Great Ormond Street Children's Hospital. It's one of the best in the world. All of us who teach Dickens and have Dickens clubs, we support this hospital. It was founded in 1852, but it needed money. So in 1853, Dickens figured out a way he thought that he could raise lots of money and give it to his hospital. He dressed up in a fancy outfit. He rented auditoriums throughout London. He knew that Christmas Carol was the best thing he'd ever write, and people loved it. He was a great actor, so what he did, he charged a lot of money for people to come and sit there, he came on stage, and he did a dramatic reading of Christmas Carol for people who paid money that went to the hospital. He thought it would be a huge success. Was he ever wrong? At the first performance, something hit him that should have hit him before. Christmas Carol is not a long work, but to read it aloud for an audience, it takes three hours and 55 minutes. After two hours, people in the front rows were fainting. People in the back were sneaking out the fire exit. You can't stand at a podium and read a work for four hours. When he came home from his first performance, his wife said, was it a success? No, Dickens said, it was not. I looked up after three and a half hours at the expression on the audience's face <laughs> And I wanted to suggest that we all hold hands and try to contact the living. That's how bad it was. But did it discourage him? No. He went home that night and he slashed away at Christmas Carol. He reduced it to something that could be read in 55 minutes to an audience. This cutting is so brilliant. If you ever heard it, you'd have no idea what he left out. It has everything great about Christmas Carol, and it can be done in 55 minutes. It became a tradition for Dickens to read it to his family, and for 120 years, the Dickens family held the copyright. It's not available at any place, except that Dickens had a great-grandson named Cedric Dickens. He was the great-grandson of, of Charles Dickens, but he was the great, great, great friend of mine. I knew Cedric very well. He passed away two years ago, but before he died, he said, Elliot, I will give you permission to publish Dickens' reading version of A Christmas Carol if you give the profits to the Great Ormond Street Christmas, uh, uh, Great Ormond Street Children's Hospital. I can't believe it. Here is the copy right here for sale. But I knew nobody is going to buy a book that is just Dickens' reading version of A Christmas Carol. So it opens with an absolutely brilliant essay on how Dickens changed how we celebrate Christmas, written by Dr. Elliot Engel. I have read the essay. I am so impressed. <laughs> Best thing I've ever read on Dickens. You get my essay. You get Dickens' version of Christmas Carol. But that's just the first half. <laughs> yes, there's more. Because Cedric, this is hard. I'm a shy scholar, but for a good cause, I do come out. It turns out that Cedric also gave me Dickens' wife's recipes for what they served every Christmas for their Christmas meal and all the Christmas breakfasts, Christmas lunches, Christmas teas, Christmas dinners. This thing is full of incredible recipes for Christmas and all other time. That is followed by a section on the drinks that they drank at Christmas 
and the toast that Dickens proposed. That is followed by the games they all played on Christmas Day. Simple directions for how to do the games today. That is followed by a section on how the Victorians decorated for Christmas. We call the book A Christmas Carol Keepsake, Dickens's reading version, and your Victorian Christmas celebration. It is a wonderful 160-page book, chock full of recipes, my introduction, Dickens's Christmas Carol. It really, really is good. Times are terrible. We are all looking for gifts less than $20 to give people. This is it. <laughs> and it goes for a good cause. And it turns out, because I was so grateful you invited me to come, before I came tonight, I have inscribed every front page. I have written best wishes, and I really meant it, and my name. But I have brought my inscribing pen. I can put anybody's name in it you want. Christmas is coming. What a wonderful gift. Mother's Day is coming. Father's Day is coming. You have a wonderful English teacher who gave you A's when you didn't deserve it, and that's how you got into the state. What a lovely way. What a nice way to end that past English teacher. That's right. It is a superb book. I will inscribe any name on it you want, then they can't return it. They're stuck with it. Their name is in the book. So, if you would like an inscribed copy, the book is just $18.50, which makes the tax $150. Now, wait a minute, I'm not an, uh, just an English major, but that comes to $20. Easy, $20. That's all it is. If you brought cash, I've got change. If you brought a check, you make it out to the Dickens Club. Our organization goes right to the charity. The only thing I hate, I was only able to bring 1,400 copies, so it's going to be first come, first serve. I don't have quite 1,400, but should you want to contribute to a very worthy cause, or if you have any question you'd like to ask me, I'll be right outside up there. You'll see me with all the books next to me looking really sad. Do come by and say hello. It does make a wonderful gift for anybody. 25 minutes are gone. You've been a superb audience for me. Thank you very much.